Naming and formula writing for molecular compounds isn't really that difficult, but you do need to remember the prefixes. So pause, take a moment, and familiarize yourself with these prefixes here, and then we'll get started. We'll start with formula writing for molecular compounds. Let's try carbon dioxide. So these are the rules we'll use. First, we write the element symbol, carbon is C, and then oxide, that's oxygen, so we write O. And now we need to look at our prefixes. We have di, and if you remember di, like a pair of dice, that's two. So we put that after the oxygen to show there's two oxygens. And that's the formula for carbon dioxide, CO2. Note that we don't write a one after the carbon. That's not necessary. It's important to note that when we're dealing with molecular compounds, we have a nonmetal plus a nonmetal. That's what gives us a molecular compound. If we had a metal here, and the nonmetal, that would be ionic, and we would use different rules. So pause and give these a try. For phosphorus pentachloride, we have the one phosphorus, we write our P. Chloride, that's chlorine, so we put a Cl, and we have penta, like a pentagon, five sides, we have five chlorine atoms. PCl5, that's the formula for phosphorus pentachloride. For tetraphosphorus, decoxide, we have phosphorus again, you can see that, and then oxide, we know that's our oxygen. So tetra, that means four. Oxide, we had the deck in front of it, that means 10. So P4O10, that's the formula for tetraphosphorus decoxide. Finally, for dihydrogen monoxide, compound you might recognize, we have hydrogen, that's H, oxide, that's O, we have di, that means two, mono, that means one, but we don't need to write the one. And we have H2O. And that's really all there is to writing the formulas for molecular compounds. Naming is just the reverse of formula writing. But before we do that, take a moment and practice these prefixes again before we move on. So to name a molecular compound like Br3O8, Note that we have a nonmetal and a nonmetal. That means it's molecular. We'll first write the name of each element. Next, we change the ending on the oxygen to IDE. So the YGEN, we get rid of that, and we write IDE. Finally, we add our prefixes. Three is tri, like the sides of a triangle. So we put tri in front of the bromine, and we'll change the B to a lowercase. And then for the eight on the oxygen, just like an octopus has eight legs, we put oct in front of oxide. And that makes the name for Br3O8 tribromine octoxide. I like that, octoxide. One quick exception. If you had CO, you might think it would be monocarbon monoxide, but you'd be wrong. We never write mono on the first element. We just don't. We also don't have two vowels in a row. So we won't have monoxide, it'll be monoxide. So that makes the formula for CO carbon monoxide. So pause and write the name for each one of these formulas. Note that I included an ionic compound, a metal and a nonmetal. So be careful. For NO, we have nitrogen, monoxide. For CaCl2, Ca, that's a metal. Chlorine's a nonmetal. So we can't use the rules for naming molecular compounds. We need the rules for ionic compounds. It turns out for CaCl2, we would call it calcium chloride. We don't need to write a di in front of the chlorine because we know the charges on calcium and on chlorine, and we can figure out the formula just from the name. For CCL4, we have carbon tetrachloride. And for N2O2, that'll be dinitrogen tetroxide. Remember, we don't have double vowels. And that's it for writing the names for molecular compounds. Note that we can have more than two nonmetals in a compound. In fact, it's very common in biochemistry and organic chemistry. When we have more than two nonmetals in a compound, we use a different set of rules to write the names and formulas. For lots more practice naming and writing formulas for molecular compounds, visit Breslin.org. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.